6.1 More About Areas. In this section, we're going to learn how to find the area between curves. In other words, we'll be able to find the area of the region S, which in this example here, S lies between two curves, y equals f of x and y equals g of x, and between the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b. We're going to be assuming that f and g are continuous functions and that f of x is greater than or equal to g of x over the whole interval. Our goal is to find the area of this region S. In order to do this, we're going to go back and think of our Riemann sums as a way of finding the area between two curves now. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide up our area between the two curves into a bunch of different rectangles of equal width. The strips that we define are going to be looking like this. And so we're going from x equals a to x equals b. And our strips have a width of delta x. In order to find the area under the region, we will be adding up all of the n strips. So we're going to sum n of these strips. And the distance between here and here, right, that's the height of our rectangle. The height is going to just be f of x minus g of x, since our f of x curve is always over our g of x curve on the region from a to b. Our height is f of x minus g of x, and our width is delta x. So we're going to sum up all of those rectangles. In order to find the actual area, we'll just find the limit as n approaches infinity because we're trying to make as many rectangles under there as is possible. We'll then recognize that the limit of the summation can be formalized as the integral. So we're going from a to b, that was our bounds, of the height f of x minus g of x dx because we're adding up all of these rectangles between a and b. The area is formalized as the area under the f of x curve, and then subtract out the area under the g of x curve, and we're left with s, the area we're trying to find. You can say the area under the f of x curve minus the area under the g of x curve, or this is kind of like going backwards from how we usually do it, we can just put it all under one integral since we have the same bounds on both of our integrals. In order to find the area of the region enclosed by the parabolas y equals x squared and y equals 2x minus x squared, we first have to think about where these curves might intersect so that we know when the f of x curve is on top of the g of x curve, since we were saying before that we always need to do the curve that is on top minus the curve that is on the bottom in order to find the area. So, if we don't want a graph and we don't really know what it looks like, then we can just find the intersection points. So where do these two curves intersect? See where they intersect. So I'm going to put the x squared over here and I get 2x squared minus 2x equals 0. I can factor out a 2x and I'm left with x minus 1 equals 0. So I know that it intersects at x equals 0 and at x equals 1. Now, you don't really need to know what the curve looks like. But you do need to realize that this curve is going to be on top of this curve on the interval from 0 to 1. If you're not sure, remember you can always plug in values and see which one is on top of the other. Just in case this is a non-calculator question on the AP exam and you can't actually graph it. So the area is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of the top curve minus the curve that's on the bottom. And so I'm going to always simplify first before doing anything. So I get 2x minus 2x squared. 
And now I'm just going to take the antiderivative. So I take away the squiggly and the dx because I'm, I'm taking the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of 2x is x squared. The antiderivative of that is add 1. And then I'm evaluating between 0 and 1. So now I'm going to stick in a 1 everywhere. And then I would stick in a 0 everywhere. And so I'm left with 1 minus 2 thirds, in other words, 1 third. If you look on this slide, you see an illustration, and you see that y equals 2x minus x squared is above the curve y equals x squared on the interval from 0 to 1. And so that's how you find the area under 2x minus x squared and above y equals x squared. Remember that you always have to do the top curve minus the bottom curve. Find the area of the region bounded above by y equals e to the x, so this is going to be our top curve, bounded below by y equals x, so that's going to be our bottom curve, and bounded on the sides by x equals 0 and x equals 1. So I know that my integral is going to be going from 0 to 1. With just a brief sketch of what this looks like, you know y equals e to the x looks something like this. It's going through 0, 1. And you know y equals x goes something like that. And we're just going between 0 and 1. So you know that this point on the y equals x curve is just going to be 1, 1. And you know that this point on the y equals e to the x curve is just going to be the point 1, e. We want to find the area between these two regions. So this right here is just going to be one of my strips, right, if I'm doing the Riemann sum. I'm going from 0 to 1. So I need to find the area, which is... I'm going from 0 to 1, and I need the top curve minus the bottom curve. There's no simplifying I can do, so I'm just going to go ahead and take the antiderivative. The antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x minus 1 half x squared, evaluated between 0 and 1. So I get e to the 1 minus 1 half times 1. Now don't get sloppy and forget to plug the zero in, because in this case, usually it cancels out when we just have x to the sum power, but we have e to the zero, which is one. So don't get sloppy and forget to plug in the zero. So e minus three halves is the area. In example three, we want to use our calculator to find the approximate area of the region bounded by these two curves. And so if we go ahead and put them into our calculator to see what the curves look like, we'll see that they look something like this and the other one, sorry, that should go through zero, zero. And the other one looks something like this. And so we know that y equals x over root x squared plus 1 is going to be our top curve. Here's a little slice that we're looking at. And this curve is going to be on the bottom. And we know we're going from 0, 0 to some other intersection point. So what you're going to do on your calculator is you're going to go to Calc, and you're going to find Intersect. To find the intersections of the two curves, you need this point. You obviously know that this x value is 0. So when you go and do that, you should get something like 1.1807760.7631. As soon as you do this, after you do the second calc intersect, you're going to do second quit to go to the home screen. 
When you're in the home screen, type in X and then you're going to hit your store key, which looks like this, right on top of the on key on your calculator because you're going to store the X value. The X value is this value right here right now. You're going to store that in alpha A or whatever letter you want. I usually store it in alpha A. This value is now stored in A. Remember how I said on the AP exam, if you're not accurate to three decimal places, you don't get the points? So this is going to ensure accuracy. In order to then find the area, you know that you're going between 0 and A because this was stored in A. On the AP exam, you can just say let A equal 1.180776 and then set up this integral actually writing the A. That's totally allowed. So you want to find the area under the curve, this one because that's the top curve, minus the bottom curve. Don't forget that needs to be in parentheses. And so in our calculator, we're just going to do fn int. I'm going to just stick this curve in y1. I'm going to stick this curve in y2. And so I'm going to do y1 minus y2. Our variable that we're integrating with respect to is x. And my bounds are 0 to a. And so by doing that, I just get 0 0.7854. And that's all I have to do. In example four, we see a figure that shows the velocity curves for two cars, A and B. They start side by side and they're moving along the same road. We want to know what the area between the curves represents. In other words, what does this area represent? So, we know the area under the velocity curve A represents the distance because we're going backwards. The distance traveled by car A during the first 15 seconds. Note in this, since my velocity is always positive in both A and B, my distance and displacement are actually going to be the same exact thing. Similarly, the area under curve B is the distance traveled by car B 
in the first 16 seconds. Therefore, the area between the curves is just the distance between the cars. Or after 16 seconds have elapsed, the area on, between the curves is just the distance between the cars after 16 seconds. Now we just need to change our point of view. Notice in all the first examples, we were choosing our sections to be these vertical strips that look like this. Now, there will be instances where it will actually be easier to look at horizontal strips. Well, if I'm looking at horizontal strips, then I would be adding up all of my rectangles between y equals c and y equals d. And so since my C and my D will be Y bounds, I must be doing my integral with respect to Y because everything must be Y bounds. And then I must have Ys everywhere here. When I'm doing this, you know how I was always doing top minus bottom in the first examples? Now, in order to find the height, I'll just be doing my right minus my left so that I'll get a positive height. So it's important that I do right minus left in this case. For example, here, I want to find the area enclosed by the line y equals x minus 1 and the parabola y squared equals 2x minus 6. So in this example, it might be easier to solve for x instead of solving for y because when I solve for y in this example, I need a plus or minus root and I'm not going to have a very easy time taking that antiderivative, I know. So let's first off find our intersection points so that we can determine our bounds. We know that we want to solve for x ultimately because we're going to be doing our example that way. So we get x equals y plus 1 and in this case um, we have 2x equals y squared minus 6. In other words, x equals 1 half y squared minus 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we'll find the intersection of those two curves. So oh, I don't really like this fraction here. Let's multiply everything by 2. And then we get y squared minus 2y minus 8 equals 0. Y we need a 4 and a 2, a negative and a positive. So we know the intersection points are at negative 2 and at 4. So we know that our area is going to be going between negative 2 and 4. Now you have to be able to identify which curve is on the left and which curve is on the right. If you don't know which curve is on the left and on the right, then go ahead. You know, 0 is in between. y equals 0 is in between those two. So the x-coordinate when y equals 0 here is going to be 1. And the x-coordinate when y equals 0 is going to be negative 3. So clearly this curve is the left. And this curve is the right. Because when we put in the 0, which was in our bound, y equals 0 is in our bound, we got this x was 1, and we got that this x was negative 3. If you look on the next slide where it's drawn, you'll see that this must be the point 0, 1, and this must be the point 0, negative 3. So that helps us determine our left and our right if you don't know what the figure looks like. Um, also, while I'm in this illustration, what we're doing is we're adding up all of these rectangles. So now our strips look like this. So that's why we're doing right minus left between y equals negative 2 and y equals 4 because we're adding up all of these strips between negative 2 and 4. So we need to do the right curve minus the left curve. Again, be very careful that every single variable here is corresponding to the y. 
what is the y? We're going from y equals negative 2 to y equals 4. Our variable here is a y. All these variables must be y variables. Now, let's try and simplify before we take any antiderivatives. Combine like terms. When we take the antiderivative, now I'm evaluating. So I have a cubed. should be left with 18. And so again, here's the illustration, and that's it for this lesson.